Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome to episode 8 of our IC2 Classic Mod Spotlight series. Now today we're going to be talking about upgrades. I know we've covered a few of them, some of them more so, some of them about all the coverage that we need in previous episodes, but there's a bunch of upgrades with an IC2 Classic. Now we have already covered the efficient saw blade and the durable saw blade, and you know we've already covered everything that relates to those. Those are only used in the sawmill, so we don't really need to go over those again. And then also the crystallizer upgrade, fission upgrade, lapatronic upgrade. We've already covered those. Of course, those go and allow you to upgrade the different charge pads. Okay. Now, one simple upgrade I want to go ahead and show you before we get started with the more in-depth ones is there is this MFS unit upgrade kit. And all this does is if you take it and you have an MFA and you just right-click the MFA with it, you'll notice that it upgrades it to an MFSU. And the MFA is the only one that has an upgrade. So you can only upgrade the MFA to the MF MFSU. You can't, you know, if I right click the bat box, it's not gonna do anything. If I right click, say, the MFSU, it's not gonna upgrade to a PESU. So just a heads up on that upgrade. Like I said, it's the only one that has, uh, you know, something like that. Now, first up, we're gonna cover just a few upgrades that relate specifically to the charge pads. Okay, and I'm just going to quickly go over these. There's not a whole lot to them, but let's say, for example, we open up the Lapatronic charge pad. You'll notice this slot right here, right? Okay, this is for upgrades for the charge pad. Now, the first three here, we have the damage conversion module. And basically what that does is when it's put into a charge pad, instead of charging up somebody's armor um, and hotbar and stuff like that, the damage conversion module is going to cause it to actually shock players that stand on the charge pad and it's actually going to apply a poison effect. So for example, if I put a charge pad right here, and you'll notice that's getting some power. Let's go ahead and bump this up a little bit here. That'll be enough. And we're gonna throw a damage conversion module into there. I'm gonna put that there just so I can step on it. And if I go into game mode S and I stand on this, you'll notice I get some really nasty poison. And it actually does quite a bit of damage. And then in addition, when you have the damage conversion module in the uh, charge pad, you'll notice I can't open it. I can only open it from the bottom, okay? So that's what the damage conversion module does. Now, there's also the drain conversion module. This is another kind of negative type module, and you can use it, I guess, um, against other players and stuff of that nature. But what the drain conversion module does is if someone stands on it, instead of charging their equipment, it's actually going to drain the energy from their equipment. And the power that, that is drained from the equipment, instead of going into the charge pad, it's actually just going to get lost. Okay, so it basically just destroys the power in their equipment, and it actually uses energy to do that. So basically, it's draining power from the charge pad in order to drain power from, um, you know, players' armor and, and their baubles and their equip their weapons and stuff on their hotbar going to drain that so and once again like the damage conversion module it's not going to be able to be accessed um, except from the bottom okay and then lastly we have the armor priority module now if i recall i covered this one actually in the episode that we talked about the charge pads but i'll quickly um, go over it once again the armor priority module basically if you put this into a charge pad it's going to prioritize the things that are in your armor slots over the stuff in your hot bar so that stuff will get charged first, and then once that's done, then it will charge the hot, the hot bar. And then next up, you have the proximity booster and the wideband booster. Uh, basically what these do, if you recall when we were going over charge pads, I said that whenever you stand on these, it's going to charge your armor, your baubles, and then your equipped item, right? So for example, if I had, you know, say my nano sabers right here, and if I had it equipped, it would also charge that. So for example, if I put this here, you'll notice... It's draining stuff from my nano saver. This is the, uh, the drain conversion. It's also draining off my armor. Now, if I stand on the fission charge pad, it's going to charge up my nano saver. And then once that's done, let's say I didn't have it equipped, you'll see it's charging up my armor. So normally it's going to prioritize whatever you have equipped and then your armor and baubles. But if you have that armor priority module, it's going to prioritize that. Now, what you can do is you can actually use the proximity booster module. And let's put that into there. So we'll throw that right there. And then what's going to happen is, let's say my hand's right here. You'll notice it's charging the nano saber even though it's not equipped. 
what this does is the uh, proximity booster basically it's going to charge whatever you, you have equipped whatever slot you have active okay and then it's going to charge the two items adjacent to it so in this case it's charging the nano saber and it would be charging an item over here now one thing to note however is like let's say i've got my this second nano saber selected you'll notice it's equally charging all three of these that's one thing to note is that it's going to charge slower because it's splitting its power across all three of these items okay now in addition you also have the wideband booster and what this does is where the proximity booster basically allows you to have whatever you were equipped being charged and the two adjacent the wideband booster actually charges anything in your hotbar so even if I got you know more nano sabers throw them into here they're getting power but the thing to note is let's say you had you know not all nine slots here with something in them that needs charging it's going to try and split all the power that it has into those nine items and also bear in mind that if you don't have the armor priority module it's going to charge your hotbar first now if I only had say one nano saber in my hotbar it's going to dump all of its power into that nano saber because that's the only thing that can accept the power so you're not wasting any you and it's not making it slower if you only have one item but it's splitting you know splitting all of that and then last up you have the field expansions you have basic standard and advanced okay and I know I've covered these before with the sound muffler but they also work in the charge pad you can throw them instead of where the booster is we can throw in say a basic field expansion um, or the standard or the advanced and what this does you'll notice when I throw the advanced in there that's why I threw that one in there because you can really see it basically normally the charge pads only charge whatever's standing on top of it and like I said before I mean you can stand in between you can end up if you wanted to stand on four charge pads at once um, and get the boost of all of them but you have to be touching the block okay the field expansion ones what they do is they increase the charge radius the basic increases it by one the standard increases it by two and the advanced increases it by three so basically what what it does is if you have like a group of people with you one person can stand on the charge pads and then it's going to do say you had the advanced field expansion in there it's going to do a seven by seven around this fission charge pad and charge everybody within that area okay so you know it's good if in in like a server type setting all right so next up let's talk about the core upgrades um, now first up we have the overclockers um, these are pretty standard to you know IC2 experimental you guys probably are familiar with these um, basically what they do is they increase a machine speed so you can see right here that the overclocker is going to bump up the speed of the machine from 100% you know to 130% and it's going to increase the energy consumption um, from 100% to 160% okay so it's a 60% increase on energy consumption 30% increase in machine speed so for example if we saw right here that's how fast the recycler is running if I throw in an overclocker it gets a little bit faster I throw in two it's noticeably faster three four five six okay so you notice that as you add more of these it gets faster and faster the reason that that is is within IC2 Classic, any of these any of these upgrades that do things with multipliers, okay? So that's like the overclocker, that's like the efficiency upgrades, quantum overclocker slowness. Uh, they are going to increase things multiplicatively. So the more that you add on there, the better it gets. However, something like a transformer upgrade, it just machine tear modifier plus one. Okay, there's no multiplication involved. So basically, if you throw in two transformers, it's plus two. Three is plus three. Whereas with the overclockers, the more you add, um, the more noticeable the effect gets. Now, bear in mind that the energy consumption on these overclockers, 60%, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a decent boost. And you're going to have to remember that as that machine modifier speed goes up, so too does the energy consumption modifier. And you can actually get to the point where um, you know, for example, right here, the recycler, it has 45 EU storage. So you may have to increase the EU storage just to be able to run the recycler because of the fact that you may get to where you're using more than 45 per tick. Okay, so the machine wouldn't have enough energy, so you're going to have to upgrade that energy storage. And these overclockers stack to 64. 64, if I put that in there, you know, as it doesn't do anything. 
Um, that's because it, it would require too much power to do that. Um, like if I put that in there, you can see that energy usage right now on the left there, it's um, 2,147,483, I mean, 147,483,647 EU. There's no way we can run that because it's only getting 45 EU, all right? Um, also, one thing to note, there is a cutoff point with every machine, and it's different depending on the machine, but there is a cutoff for overclockers where they, they no longer are really needed, okay? And the reason being is because a machine can only run one cycle per tick. So if it gets to the point where it's trying to run faster than that, it's not going to do anything. So there is a cutoff point, so just kind of pay attention. I'm not going to go over the cutoff points for every single machine within this tutorial, but just know that there is a cutoff point with that. Now the efficiency upgrades, these are not present within IC2 Experimental and they are absolutely wonderful. And they make really overclocking machines so much better because what they do is they actually drop your energy consumption modifier to 95%. So, you know, it's only 5%, but bear in mind that it is multiplicative. So, for example, right now the recycler is using 13 energy. Okay? And if I put these efficiency upgrades in there, 16 of them, it's now 6 EU. So it's over half of the energy <laughs> is cut off of that for one stack of efficiency upgrades. Um, also, when we're talking about upgrades, know that most of these can stack. Um, I believe transformers only stack to 13, and I don't think you actually even need that many of them. Overclockers, you can put a full stack of those, but it's not needed. I think generally, I think like 16, 17 is the most that you're going to put in a machine. Efficiency, you can stack those to 16 per stack. Those you can put really as many as you want to. You can actually get your machines down to where they're running at 1 EU. So basically that's how efficiency upgrades work. It's basically just going to drop the EU cost on your machines. Um, and there's no, I mean, there's no downside. It doesn't drop your speed at all or anything like that. Now in addition, you have the slowness upgrade. This actually drops your speed to 50%. So it cuts it down in half but your energy consumption modifier goes down 60%, okay? So for example, in the recycler, let me pull out these upgrades here. And we got that running. Now if I throw a slowness upgrade in there, you'll notice it gets noticeably slower, but our EU usage is only one. Actually, I think, okay. Recycler is not a good example. It's always one, but uh, for example, the macerator. Actually, we'll show you the sawmill, okay? It's three EU. But if I throw a slowness upgrade into that, drops it down to 2 EU, and you're going to get about 50% of the speed. So it's a bit slower with that slowness upgrade. So anyways, that's what the slowness upgrade does. Now in addition, as far as speeding up and slowing down machines, there's one other upgrade to go over, and that is the quantum overclocker. Now this is very late game stuff. You've, you notice it requires a couple plasma cores, overclockers, carbon plates, advanced circuits. Mainly the plasma cores, this makes it very, very expensive. But the overclocker, the quantum overclocker, increases machine speed by 160%, energy consumption by 130%. So you'll notice it's the complete reverse of the overclocker. It uses less power and runs faster. Okay? Well, uses in comparison to an overclocker. Not, you know, um, it's still a little bit of an energy consumption. But the quantum overclocker is your very late game overclocker, okay? And it's got a very, very expensive cost to go with it, so. Now next up you have the transformer upgrade. And basically what this does is this will allow a machine to accept higher tier power. Okay, so for example, the recycler, it's an LV machine. I throw a transformer into there, and now you'll notice over there it says max input is 128, and it's an input tier 2. So I can now bump up this creative energy source and pump more power into this. Now this by itself, you know, the transformer, you can accept more power. It makes your machines not as easy to blow up. But it's not going to speed up your machine or anything like that. But it will allow you to do more overclockers um, when coupled with energy storage modules. Okay, so let's talk about the energy storage modules. You have two different options here. You have just the standard. It gives you 10,000 extra EU storage. And if I put this in you'll notice that now I can store 10,045. I put a second one in there, 2,045, okay? Pretty straightforward, that's what the energy storage module does. Now in addition, there's also the energy storage multipliers. And by the way, these energy storage upgrades, you can stack them to where you have like one stack of those, 
is 640,000 45 EU. So a 640,000 boost to the energy storage. Now you also have these energy storage multipliers, extra energy storage modifier 200%, okay? And these can only stack up to three, but let's say I put this in there. Right now we have 640,000. If I put one of those in there, we now have 1,280,090. Two of these and you have two and a half million. Three of these and you have a little over five million. So basically it's just gonna double and rem remember, it's multiplicative, so it's not going to double this 640,000 each time. It's going to double first 640,000, then it's going to double that hundred, that, 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 blah, that one million, then it's going to double that two and a half million. Okay? So that's how the energy storage multiplier works. And basically, it's just going to bump up your energy storage. That way, you could have higher, you know, base energy cost than you know, the, the limit of 45 being the most that you could pump in there per tick. Now, one thing to note is that the tier, the tier uh, 3 and the tier 4 machines, that is actually created via upgrades, okay? And the way it works is you're going to basically fill a machine with overclockers and efficiency upgrades and stuff. Let's throw some efficiency upgrades into this. You'll notice that I'm coming out right now on positive on power, and look how fast it's running. That was a visual bug there. Extremely fast, right? And I could throw another one in there. I mean, look at that. It's like tick, 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 just killing that stuff. Okay, so this is pretty much how you're going to go about making your Tier 2 machine. Okay? Or, I'm sorry, your Tier 3 machines. We covered Tier 2 machines, how you have, like, say, the um, compacting recycler. And, for example, if I threw, say, cobblestone upgrades into there in, like, this fast one that's over here. Okay, I mean that goes through stuff really, really quickly, right? It looks like 15 is the cutoff point for the recycler. 14 is your ideal spot. Any more than that, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna kill it. So basically, that's how you make. You would go about making your tier three, is getting stuff really boosted like this. Now, right now, this thing is eating 317 EU. Okay. Now there's a way to fix that, and this is like the official, kind of like your official tier three point is you're going to get what's called upgrade containers. Okay, now these, they're a little bit expensive because you do need iridium to make these. But, to make an actual, what you would consider a tier 3 machine, you would take and fill these upgrade containers with your upgrades. So we're going to throw three stacks of efficiency upgrades. And we're going to throw this thing in there. And you can see that now our energy usage is only 61. Okay? And so let's grab another upgrade container. And basically these upgrade containers allow you to store three stacks of upgrades in one upgrade slot. Okay, so now let's grab more efficiency upgrades. And then we're going to grab our overclockers. And we're going to throw all of this into there. So as you can see, you don't have to have the exact same upgrades. You can use any combination of them. Now we have the recycler running at 12 EU. Okay. And let's throw another one in there. Okay. Now our recycler is running at 2 EU. Now at this point, really, we don't have to have the energy storage upgrades, honestly. Because we're barely using any power at all. So now our recycler is running at 1 EU, and it's running this fast. Okay. So that's basically what Tier 3 is within the pack, is getting your your tier one machines, really pushing them to the limit to where they run like this and cost one EU. So I mean, you could easily run a whole line of machines on like a generator <laughs> if you had these upgrades in there. Um, and all it is is efficiency upgrades, like eight stacks of efficiency upgrades, 14 overclockers, okay? And really you don't even have to have the transform if you didn't want to. You could run all these machines just on LV power, no problem at all. Okay, so basically whenever I mention Tier 3, that's kind of the Tier 3 machine. Tier 4 would be getting, you know, the quantum overclockers. You could cut down the amount of efficiency upgrades and stuff if you had those quantum overclockers. But as far as speeding up your machine, no, it doesn't do that. It just cuts down, you know, on how many, how many upgrades and stuff that you need. So getting these upgrade containers, as you saw, I got the machine running really, really fast, but it had a very high EU cost at the same time. Okay, but... 
if you get these upgrade containers, get yourself some iridium, throw UU matter creation, get those created, and now you have just super machines. And you can do this with, you know, pretty much all the standard machines. Now, some of these, of course, the Rare Earth Extractor doesn't accept upgrades. Mass Fab doesn't accept upgrades. Um, you know, certain ones are not going to accept upgrades, but most, you know, pretty much all your Tier 1 machines, um, aside from, like, the Electrolyzer, uh, must be a squid, all of those will be able to become just like the Recycler, running super fast, like an item per tick, at the cost of 1 EU. Okay? Now, in addition, you have the Cobble Gen upgrade, which we covered that before. Basically, when you put these in there, it's going to give you cobblestone every second. All right? And the more that you have, the more cobblestone you get per second. So, for example, um, over here, you know, I've got 64. So, if I pulled out this cobblestone, boom, I get 64 cobblestone. Now, if I only had 32 in here, I pull this out, boom, 32, boom, 64. And that's pretty much how the Cobble Gen upgrade works and anything that can accept cobblestone you can put into this so for example if you're building a cobble works and you wanted to run it through say the mo rotary macerator or whatever you throw that in there pow we're making sand okay and then if we come over here the induction furnace we wanted to make smooth stone pow it's making smooth stone now we also have a creative upgrade basically you can put this into a machine and let's say we pulled out all of these and we put the creative upgrade in there. Basically, the machine tier modifier, you can see it, it basically it allows the machine to accept any kind of power. It allows the machine to have super energy storage, consume no energy. Basically, it's just a creative tool, though, is all it is. It's not, you know, it's not craftable or anything like that. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about that. Um, and then lastly, you have, this is the last upgrade, but this is the last one for this part. Um, we have the experience collector upgrade. Now what this does, let's say, let's say for example, right here, we wanted to put it into here. And you'll notice when I pulled out that sand, I got a little bit of XP, right? Well, what the experience collector upgrade does is if we throw in, say, cobblestone into this, it starts running. You can see the stored experience is going up. It's slowly storing up a bit of XP. Every time that it macerates where you would normally lose that XP because of automation. So, you know, items are getting pulled out. You're not actually pulling the items out, so you're not getting XP. Basically, what the experience collector does is it allows you to get that XP in an automated system. Okay. Now, you will notice that it says extra energy consumption 5 EU per tick. Basically, having that upgrade in there is going to increase the amount of EU that the machine is going to eat through in order to sustain that upgrade. Now, what you can do is whenever you get your XP, whenever you're ready to basically harvest it, what you're going to do is you're going to pull the XP upgrade out, and you're going to shift, right click, and pow. You'll notice my XP went up by a little bit. And that's really all there is to the experience upgrade. Now, one, a couple things to note about it is that first up, the maximum amount that you can store in there is 5,000 points. Okay, That's equivalent to about 21 levels of XP within a single XP collector. So then what you could do is you could pull the XP out of the collector and go dump it in your enchanter, your electric enchanter, and store your XP in there. Now in addition, you do get a 50% XP loss by having the XP stored in the experience collector. So you're going to get a little bit less XP than you would if you manually pulled it out. But if this is automated, you're still getting XP where normally you wouldn't get any. Okay, So that's all the experience collector does. Now next up we have these sound upgrades. I know we've already covered these when we talked about the sound beacon. We have loudness, muffler, and mute. And basically what these do is they work just like, you know, they did in the sound beacon. If we throw the sand in the, or not sand, sand won't go in there, but let's take uh, a little bit of cobblestone. We'll throw this in the rotary macerator. Makes a bunch of noise. Mute, mutes the sound on the machine. Loudness, makes it louder. Muffler, muffles the sound. And, of course, a full stack. There you go. Four of them. It's a lot less audible. Okay. And that's really all that those do. Now, next up, we have the redstone inverter, which we've already covered that upgrade. Uh, basically, if you put this into, you know, a machine, basically, it's going to invert the redstone signal requirements. Okay. So, in the case of the Tier 2 machines, you know, they require redstone to heat up. With the redstone inverter, they require redstone to heat, you know, to stop heating up. 
Okay, and no redstone signal means they're gonna they're gonna keep heating up until you know they're given a redstone signal. Um, and of course, we've already went over that one, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time talking about it. Basically, that's all it does: inverts redstone and changes basically inverts what happens when it gets redstone or when it doesn't have redstone. The redstone sensitivity upgrade, very very similar upgrade. Um, basically, what it does if we put this in here, you'll notice it doesn't heat down. Basically what the redstone sensitivity does is a machine that normally requires redstone no longer requires redstone. Okay, so in the case of these machines that need to heat up, they don't need a redstone signal anymore. So if I was to, say, apply a lever to this, and we gave it a redstone signal, you'll notice this one heats down because it's got the redstone inverter. So it's saying, okay, you got redstone, so now you need to heat down. This one doesn't heat down because it has redstone sensitivity. So with redstone sensitivity, instead of having a redstone requirement, it no longer is affected by redstone at all. Okay. Then next up we have the reactor track upgrade. Now I'm not going to really go over this one in detail in this episode. And the reason being is because it is completely related to reactors and there's really no use for it outside of reactors. We have not covered reactors yet. But basically the reactor track upgrade is going to let you track durability on reactor parts. And it's going to let your automation kind of kind of know when parts are damaged and stuff and when to replace them. And that's all the reactor track upgrade does. But like I said, we'll cover it more in detail uh, next, you know, once we get to the nuclear stuff. Okay. All right, now next up we have the crafting upgrade. Now this one's actually kind of nice. Uh, what you can do is you can hold your side inventory key and right click and you can open up this GUI right here. Anyways, what you can do is, let's say we wanted to have this recycler as it runs, create scrap boxes. Instead of just making the scrap, let's have it make scrap boxes. So what we could do is we can hold C, right click, and we're going to put our scrap in here in the recipe just like a scrap box. Say validate and there we go. It says okay, that makes a scrap box. And now if you take a look here at the crafting upgrade, you can see at the bottom there, crafting output, scrap box. And basically whenever you use like a side facing upgrade, because we're about to get into a bunch of those with like the import and export upgrades and stuff like that. Basically what happens is if you right click, you get the opposite side of the face that you click on. So if I right click on this, there we go, south, it doesn't have to be a machine. But let's say I right click on the top, it does down, okay? So it's going to be the opposite side that you click on. Now if you shift click, it's going to be the actual face of the machine. So that's up, that's north. But in this case, you know, we want it to go this way. So we're going to right click there, direction south. And right now I'm facing south. So that's the south direction. And what we're going to do then is we're going to put this crafting upgrade into the recycler. And you'll notice that now it's taking that scrap and it's crafting scrap boxes for us. So, you know, you can have machines, whenever they get their output, instead of just straight exporting it, you can have them craft something with it and then export it, okay? And that's basically how the crafting upgrade works. Now, one thing to note is the crafting upgrade speed. You'll notice it's not crafting right now. It took it a second. The crafting upgrade speed is, it kind of changes um, depending on how often it's having to craft. So basically what it does is it, it collects data from... You know, I'm not crafting, but once every 30 seconds. So really, I only need to run, say, once every 30 seconds, okay? So the, the faster that it's having to craft, it will speed up. And the slower that it's having to craft, it'll slow down. So basically, it's pretty intelligent. It's not going to try to craft every single second, because that would create a bit of lag. So what it's going to do, it's going to kind of throttle up or throttle down based on, you know, what the need is for it to be crafting. So your stuff won't be crafted instantaneously, you know, all the time if your machines, if, if it's not producing fast enough that the crafting upgrade sees that it's needing to be crafted all the time. All right, now I do believe that we're going to end this episode here because I know it's about wrapping up point. Um, next episode, we're going to finish talking about upgrades and we have some special upgrades coming up involving the machine tool, which we'll go over that tool um, in the next episode. But for example... If you right click on the macerator you can see there's upgrade slots here as well as in here okay so we'll go over those next episode and um, you know finish talking about the, the upgrades that actually go into the standard parts of the machine then we'll talk about the machine tool upgrades next episode
anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay up to date with when new videos come out and everything. And I hope to see you guys next time. I hope you guys are finding this helpful. I'm trying to be as in-depth as I can because a lot of this stuff is very, very involved, let's say. Um, especially when it comes to upgrades and whatnot. But um, tomorrow we'll get into the rest of the upgrades and we'll also get into tools. There's some really cool stuff in tools. So um, we're getting fairly close to the end of this. You know, there was just a whole lot to cover. So I do apologize about the length, but it's as short as I can make it really. So anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.